data transformations is one of those things that everybody does in Foundry. Sometimes you do one input, transform it into one output. Other times you want to have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. This video is a little bit of a more introductory example, but let me show you how you can actually do some data transformations. And we're gonna use Python in this case with PySpark for your example. We start in the Foundry reference project as usual. Let's create a folder to hold our transform code. We'll call it flight transformations and we'll prefix a name with transforms two points just to follow the conventions already used in this project. We then open this new folder and proceed to create a new repository. By hitting new, it shows us multiple choices, but we just wanted a repository. Once created, we initialize it as a data transforms in Python. This will provide us with a bootstrapped Python repository containing a starter Python project. To create a new file, we can expand the folder structure, click on the three dots and hit new file. By adding a file name finished in .py, we'll get a template transform automatically, which we can just fill in. We now need a dataset to use as input to our transform. Let's go back to the folder structure, open the flight control system, and in the clean, we'll find some already clean datasets that we can use to manipulate inside transforms. Let's pick up this flight dataset and copy the path from the location on the right. We then paste the path into the input, change the variable name to flights, and we now have created a very simple data copy. The data on the input dataset will be copied to the data on the output. We call this an identity transform since it doesn't change anything. Previewing gives us 10,000 rows for fast computation. Building enables us to compute all the data and transfer, in this case, an identity copy from flights into the output. Here we can see that we have a total of 4.2 million rows. Once this is finished, we have now created a very simple transformation that picks up one dataset from flights and places it on the output. Let's also add some PySpark code. The when you use transform underscore df, you get a data frame on your compute function. You can call directly PySpark code from for it. Here we create simple PySpark code just to create a new column. The new column called date that depends the three columns year, month, and day now shows up on the right of your preview. Since we built previously, we can now go to the data lineage and see that we have a small, very simple pipeline. The simple transform has a parent and that parent has a raw data. Now we know that we can join flights with carrier lookup. So let's open the column, let's open the data set and see if the that the column that we want to join, which is carrier code, is actually unique so that we don't get a join explosion. We click on the column header and we get a histogram. Here we can see that all values are unique, so we can join it there. We can simply add a new input uh, to the transform underscore df. We give it a variable name called carrier. We pass it to the compute function has an input. And again, we can call PySpark code directly against it. Here we add simple code to union it, or sorry, to join it. And <clears throat> the preview shows it that worked. Back to the data lineage tool, we can expand the parent and see that we now have two inputs to the simple transform. Let's go back to the pipeline and now create a multi-output transform. For this, we can no longer use transform underscore df and we must now use just transform. The reason is because transform underscore df uses the compute the return of your compute directly into the output. Here, since we have multiple outputs, we now need one variable for each. These variables will be passed into your compute function. The data frames on your inputs must not be extracted from flights and carrier. You can do it by saying dot data frame on the inputs. You can afterwards use normal PySpark code on those data frames. For the outputs, however, instead of returning, you need to write the data frame into the output. Here we say output.write data frame flights and carrier. Once you build it, you'll get a multi-output transform. Oops. 
Here I forgot to change the name of my output, thus I got a stack trace on my build. Let's fix that and build again. You should not be afraid of stack traces, you should read them and understand what's going on. Here we can see that the multi-output succeeded. On the bottom left you'll see the two output datasets. Going to the data lineage, we can now expand one of the parents to show that it has more than one children and we find our multi-output transfer. Let's remove that node that we don't need. And here we can see the whole multi-output transform. So that's it. We've now made simple input and output transform, multi-input to a single output and multi-input to multi-output transform. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next video.